Hi everyone, today we're going to be discussing the bicarbonate buffer system. And this is a common topic that is going to show up on your MCAT, most likely in the chem physics section or the bio biochem section. So it's a really important concept to grasp and be, be able to understand. So what is the main purpose of this bicarbonate buffer system? The purpose of this buffer system is to make sure that our human body's pH is maintained in a steady state. And that state is a pH of 7.3, so approximately neutral. If our pH changes or fluctuates and becomes too acidic or too basic, that causes problems in our body. So we have this inbuilt bicarbonate buffer system to ensure that we do not have problems such as that. So let's see how this works. We know our, cell, our body is composed of multiple cells. And as these cells undergo various metabolic processes, they release CO2. This CO2 is going to enter the bloodstream and react with water. As we know, as human beings, we are created mostly of water along with other chemicals, but water is an abundance of the, what we are made up of as human beings. So this carbon dioxide is going to react with water. And if we look at this in terms of a chemical reaction, we will get CO2 plus H2O. And this is going to yield h 2 CO3 minus. This is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, so it will dissociate, but not completely. So this dissociates into H, H plus HCO3 minus. And this H should have a positive sign because these are hydrogen ions. These are hydrogen cations. They carry a positive charge. This carbonic acid and its dissociation, this is the main buffer of our human body. This ensures that our, our pH is always maintained around 7.3, so at a neutral state. And that is through this H2CO3. So usually this is always maintained. As there are changes happening in our body, we make sure that this is maintained. And another reason that it, it remains maintained is because the amount of CO2 that is entering body is equivalent to the amount of CO2 leaving the body. So the amount of CO2 entering the bloodstream and the amount of CO2 leaving the bloodstream. And this is due to our lungs. So we, we breathe out CO2, we take in O2. And as we breathe out CO2, we're also helping contribute to the bicarbonate buffer system and ensure that this magic number 7.3 is maintained. So now let's look at cases of what if it is not maintained? What if there are changes in the body that cause either too much basicity or too much acidosis in the body? What's gonna happen? So what would be an example of that? An example of that would be hyperventilation. Hyperventilation, uh, commonly a symptom of asthma or it, you could actually be having an anxiety attack. But if there is hyperventilation happening, that means that the amount of CO2 leaving the body, the amount of CO2 leaving the body is much greater than the amount of CO2 entering the bloodstream. So if we look at our reaction here, if there is more CO2 leaving the body, that means our concentration of CO2 is decreasing, right? So our concentration of our reactant is decreasing. So now what is going to be the cause of this? Uh, not the cause, we know the cause is hyperventilation, but what is going to be the result of this? The result of this decrease in reactant concentration is that this equilibrium reaction is now going to shift to the left. Since there's a decreased number of reactants, we are going to have a shift towards the reactants to try to increase the number of reactants again. And this is nothing but a concept defined by Le Chatelier's principle. Excuse my spelling. But this is explained by Le Chatelier's principle, which you should remember from general chemistry. And as Le Chatelier principle states, if you increase, if you increase the concentration of either the products or the reactants, then the equilibrium reaction will shift in the other direction. So in this case, we are de decreasing the number of reactants or the moles of reactants, the concentration of reactants. So this is going to cause the reaction to shift towards the left. Now, if we're shifting towards the left, if we're shifting towards the left, that means there is less acid and more base because we know that starting from the right side, that's where we have our weak acid. 
On the left side, it is basic. So if we are hyperventilating, that is going to cause an increased basicity of the body. Now, what's going to happen if we're hypoventilating? So the opposite of hyperventilation is hypoventilation. And hypoventilation is, for example, when you hold your breath. So say you're holding your breath. If you hold your breath, the opposite situation happens. There is more CO2 entering the bloodstream. And there is less CO2, actually none in the case of you holding your breath, no CO2 leaving the body. What is this going to cause as a reaction to Le Chatelier's principle? I encourage you to pause this video and try to figure it out on your own. So what is going to happen in terms of Le Chatelier's principle? If we are increasing the concentration of CO2 as a reactant, so we're increasing concentration of the reactant, as according to Le Chatelier's principle, our reaction is now going to shift to the right. Since there are too many reactants, we're going to shift towards the products to try to increase the amount of products. So this shift to the right, so we're shifting towards the acid side, causes increased acidity in the body. And the term for that, which you might see show up on your MCAT, is called respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis. And if these things get too out of hand, that's where medical interventions have to occur. That's why we should really thank our bicarbonate buffer system for doing most of the hard work every single day and ensuring that we are maintaining our pH in the 7.3 range, this neutral range, and not getting too much basicity or too much acidity in our body. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps clear this concept up for you.